Howdy guys, it's Joe here, and I've been playing Overwatch for quite a while, and during all my time, I've seen some really big problems about people's view of heroes, and, you know, kind of how they play, how they work, and, you know, some of the problems with heroes as well, uh, that I kind of want to go over today, that might actually make you lose some of your games, uh, you might be forcing people onto someone they shouldn't play, and uh, some other stuff as well, that if you stop doing, or if you, you know, change up doing a little bit, you could actually win quite a few more games, just some overall problems that I've seen overall in the past, of course, it's just my own opinion, but hopefully some of these can help you just a little bit. Now, the the first thing that I feel like is a problem that I see uh, quite a bit and just kind of a misconception is that a lot of people feel like they need a Reinhardt in every single game and in every single game mode. Now I'd say that if you don't really know about team comp builds way too much, I feel like that can be a pretty good idea, but a lot of the times there are good times to switch off Reinhardt and onto other tanks, especially with Winston being very strong as he is right now. On maps like King of the Hill, some payload maps, and some hybrid maps even, it can work pretty decently for you to switch off your Reinhardt and go onto somebody else. If your Reinhardt's not working, switching off can be a good idea. As well with this, I feel like something that people have to realize is that if you have no one on your team that can play Reinhardt, but you have two people that can play other tanks, give them the chance to do this. I feel like I see a lot in competitive games, high level games, even some esports games, people not picking up Reinhardt and just going to other tanks, really just random mixes of tanks and they can still do really well. People really aren't used to it, they don't know exactly how it's gonna play out, and your team often does have a pretty good advantage just simply because of that. Overall, I'm not gonna say don't ever pick Reinhardt, he's especially a good pick, especially on payload, but maybe do try some other stuff out, because if you are good at tanks, a lot of other people can carry very well, especially in lower ranks, other than Reinhardt. Now, the next thing that I'd like to talk to you guys about is to not run up close to get faster slash easier kills. Now, I know this might sound pretty simple and pretty easy, but you would not believe the amount of times that I see a Soldier 76 jumping down from his spot above from his perch at a really, really good angle uh, just to the ground to try to finish off a kill that he just couldn't happen to get while he's up in the air. Often, this is definitely not worth it. You're giving up your positioning, you're giving up your distance, and you're going into a position where you're going to die a lot easier. You're much closer, and you're much easier to counter. This really just applies mostly to far range characters. Uh, but we see this with quite a bit of other characters as well. Even people like Zenyatta, sometimes Anna, we even see some battle mercies just jump up close and try to get a faster slash easier kill. I just try to remind you guys, playing safer and getting kills that way is often a lot better idea than just running up and trying to get them, so maybe just don't do that next time you get into that opportunity. Now to the flankers, as I'm just kind of talking about every role, I'm going to tell you guys, don't attack the back line by yourself. I don't know how many times I've seen a Genji, a Tracer, even a Sombra, you know, just kind of running up to the backlands of the enemies, you know, staying there for a second. Our team near our payload is, you know, grouping up. We're ready for a team fight. We're, we're getting close, getting ready to go for that. And then the Genji happens to go in 1v5 by himself, trying to get a person in the backline, and then just dies. Don't do that. Instead, wait for the team to go in 5v6, or just try to get some nice engages or counter engages or anything like that. These characters are a lot better when they're actually behind people and when people aren't paying attention to you. If you're Tracer and no one's really looking at you, or they're mainly focusing on the enemy Reinhardt, the enemy Winston, anything like that, you can often do a lot better. It'll be a lot harder for people to kill you, and they'll have to split their focus instead of just focusing on you. As well, you're going to be able to combo ultimates a lot better, and while you don't have to be right next to your team, and while you still can be behind the enemies, I'd say wait a little bit more until you are, you know, ready for a team fight uh, before you go and buy yourself again. Now, another thing that I've also heard a decent amount is people kind of complaining that their hero is useless if people don't join voice comms. And this especially I hear by a lot of support players, uh, Mercy's and Zenyatta's in particular. Mainly because these characters are very easy to kill uh, by the enemy's Genjis and Tracers if they don't have someone on voice comms kind of helping them out. So, a lot of the times what happens to these players is that they just kind of give up when people aren't helping them and kind of give up when people aren't, you know, talking to voice comms to them. They don't feel like they have enough communication to do really anything. I'm going to tell you guys that that isn't always 100% true. While you do want as much communication as you can, and while you do hope that everybody joins your voice comms, you can't really rely on that every single time. So, some things that I'd say that maybe could be a good idea for you is that as a support, you might want to try to get hide advantage and heal your teammates from there. Now, of course, you might not be able to get as close to them as fast, and you might be a little bit less effective at times, but you won't have to really worry about your teammates helping you quite as much as you're going to be able to go to them, and of course, you're going to be able to run away back to your hide advantage as fast as you came there. As well with this, if you're playing someone especially like Zenyatta, you don't always have to call out who you're hitting and when you're hitting them. Of course, that is a big benefit of Zenyatta, but if you happen to be playing the character and no one's really, you know, listening to the voice comms at all, what you can do is just discord people that people are already shooting on your team. 
of course it might not be as effective you might have to be discording the roadhog you might have to be discording you know any other tank while you want to be discording the backline or the soldier or anything like that but you can still help your team do that extra damage that way you just kind of have to focus more on what your team is doing and really just play a lot more safe without voice comms but you still can do it so please don't give up with that and as far as the final misconception that i feel like is the one that i've had a big problem with is the fact that a lot of people say and think to themselves i can't play my favorite hero because he slash she isn't top tier in the meta i'm not going to put in the effort it's not worth the time and i'm just not going to put them at all or at least i'm just going to wait until they're strong in a meta and i'm going to say to you guys don't do that a lot of times people will do this they're, they're going to say they're not going to play their character and then they just pick someone else they just follow some other character that maybe they don't like nearly as much and they don't even want to play nearly as much don't do that of course playing a higher tier character is always nice you know you win a few more games the games are a little bit easier but in my case i've been playing a lot of a creep he maybe isn't in the best spot right now and maybe i'm not the best with the character but i can put in the time and the effort and play who i really enjoy playing and get up to the rank that i want to get to with the character that i want to get to it with a lot of times i feel like people just kind of underrate how good you can do with different characters we see all the time all over the place people in top 500 and grandmaster at least with every single character in the game so while meta is beneficial and while meta does help you get to a higher place faster if you want to play who you want to play it is perfectly fine and just go with that don't do exactly what everyone else does and just switch off the characters you like just keep playing who you like and maybe if you get frustrated a few games you can switch off you know go through the meta go through the curves and then come right back right after you enjoy that and there you go those are the big misconceptions that i've personally seen in overwatch quite a bit that i feel like can lose you some games just not knowing when to switch and of course giving up on characters you like those are some of the biggest things just kind of playing a character a little bit wrong in my opinion Anyways, as always, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, as always, make sure to comment down below uh, what you think about it. And, of course, leave a like, I guess, if you want to see any more in the future. Subscribe if you want to see more content as well. And as always, guys, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful day.